and as they come. So in partnership with the Grant Wish Foundation, both teams have agreed to come together and have Tommy run the first play of the game. And he got the handoff, and there he goes. Made a little cutback move, and it looks like he's going to go all the way. <laughs> Look at him go. Wow. This is really one of those heartwarming moments in sports where you just... Oh! Oh, my God. That was just... That is not good. Welcome to the three-way podcast hump day show. What the hell? We went from all high to all normal. This is our hump day show that we bring to you every Wednesday. Uh, that is low. And then there is also me, JP, Leisure 101. Uh, you can also follow those at Public Industry 59, along with Elias, who is also JRX4. Follow his Twitch. What's up? Things of that nature. So today's Hump Day show is basically the end of football uh, for essentially all the way up until August 2020. Uh, we saw the Super Bowl, which the two best teams, one from the AFC, the other from the NFC, uh, collide and try to win that championship, that coveted championship. So as we all know, we all watch Sunday Super Bowl, the real winners are all men, because Van J. Lo and Shakira was shaking that booty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, was a, it was a good, uh, good uh, it was a good half time. show. It was a good halftime. Anyway, but no, uh, the reality is Kansas City won the Super Bowl after 50 years of attempting <clears> to do so. Uh, this is their second Super Bowl. So they have two Super Bowls that they've won. I believe they won the first one, uh, and they also – no, not the first one. They, not, they won one in 1967, and then they won this one. Uh, so it's been quite a while. Uh, essentially, the 49ers came out, uh, rode their defense pretty well, I would say, in the first half. Uh, it, I would say Jimmy G – did not play up to par Jimmy G. Cho. in that first quarter. I think they scored the first three points, and then the defense just allowed Kansas City to come back and score. I mean, fucking uh, well, was it? Mahomes is like so too small to for Jimmy that. G. Don't get me wrong. He did, he, he did miss some throws out there. There was that one throw to Emmanuel Sanders that would have put him right in the red zone. Probably would have been a touchdown. Probably would have sealed the game. Um so yeah, Jimmy G didn't play to really to the caliber well, needed to win the game. But I want to put the blame on the. Well, I mean, just to coach. just to do a quick little, uh, uh, uh why Everybody you know, watch. just a just a quick little follow up <laughs> here with uh with Jimmy G. He did not play good in the first quarter. In the second quarter, um, right after they scored three points, Kansas City came and scored the seven points. 49ers came right back, and Jimmy G played really well the second quarter. Very well. He led them. They scored a touchdown. Kansas City came right back. 10-10. Ten ten, uh, the best uh, show on earth uh, with Shakira and J-Lo checking the booty happen. The players came back on the field. And Kansas City uh, came out storming. Um, the, 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 the 49ers got the first possession in the second half. Didn't do nothing with it. Uh, mm. you know, they came back. Uh, Kansas City came back and scored on them. Uh, San Francisco scored back. So there was a lot of in and a, a good battle. Uh, at the at the end, you know, 49ers were up by 10 points going into the fourth quarter. They had a chance to win. Uh, they were running the ball effectively well, but as Lowe's was stating, they stopped. And, you know, go ahead, Lowe's. You can take it over from there. Well, that's my thing is that the, the running game has gotten you to this point. Like, you've dominated all these teams with your run game. You have mm -hmm. a Three-headed monster, although it looked like in the, in the you know, um, due to injuries, he, it was kind of two guys. But nonetheless, you have some of the – you have great linemen. I mean, your running game has dominated all season. And then when you have this lead, for some reason, you just want to let Garoppolo throw because, like, back after back, resulting in these three is out – like, there was one drive where they literally ran it the first three times. Oh, and this is in the end of the game, to win the game. Mm -hmm. um, they're down by four points. They need the touchdown. They run, like, three straight times. They get, like, three straight first downs. Yeah. Then they just let Garoppolo kind of – I mean, it was just kind of like, man, come on, man. Like, the, the run game has gotten you here. Then all of a sudden you leave it. You're trying to let Garoppolo win the game, and he just couldn't do it. I have no one else to blame but the coach. It, it, 
it's almost as bad as not giving Marshawn Lynch the ball at the one yard line. Like you know what you got. No, do. nothing. Nothing will be as bad as that. I think that's one of the right. stupidest plays in Super Bowl history. You're right. You're right. Uh, but so I, I, everybody be. knows what you have to do. Run the ball. Yeah, I think with. In this situation, and it's not just this coach for the San Francisco 49ers, uh, because, yes, I put the blame on him for him losing the Super Bowl. Uh, he should have ran the ball more. You were doing very well. You know Kansas City is not effective with, uh, with the run. Uh, I think a lot of the – and not just this coach. A lot of these coaches, for example, the coach for Tennessee, uh, the Bill O'Briens, that team, um, you know, they just stopped running the ball in the second – in the, in the second half, I don't understand it. You have Derrick Henry, you have Carlos Hyde, you have Mostert, and you don't even run the ball. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Is maybe this is a stupid way of the NFL working now? Well, keep keep in mind this Atlanta Falcons head coach was the offensive coordinator when the uh, Atlanta Falcons gave up that lead twenty eight to three to the cheating Patriots. I mean, Lord Jesus, like you think you will learn from your stupid ass mistakes? Yeah, and. Yeah, I think it's uh, something, and there are these past three teams that have faced the the Chiefs. Uh, it shows uh, the Bill O'Briens, the Titans, and the 49ers all have, you know, uh, Titans and 49ers have probably the two best run games in the in the in the league. And for some reason, they go away with it when when they face the Chiefs. I don't know if it has something to do with the intimidation. You feel like you got to try something new. But to me, if it's working, why change it? And that's where I feel like these coaches, you know, including Vrabel in there, got it, got intimidated, you know, working across from Andy Reid, playing against Patrick Mahomes, thinking you got to maybe score more points or, uh, you know, you got to play differently. They know what's coming. And they're changing their tactics. It was worked for them all year. Uh, you know, that leaves. But, you know, I, I got to give credit where credit is due. Patrick of course. Mahomes did his thing. Their defense came up. Okay, with wait, 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 wait. You cannot say Patrick Mahomes did his thing. He played a shitty game, too. But in that fourth quarter, he got them down 10 points. He <clears> drove <throat> them down the field. Actually, it was his run game. Got a, got it was his run position. game. The What's his name? Williams got 138 rushing yards. It wasn't really Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I don't think Patrick Mahomes had a great game at all. He did what he could with what what he was doing with what the game he was playing with. I think the 49ers had a good defense, but give credit where credit's due. Andy Reid came out with a good running plan, a good running back game plan. They ran the ball very well and efficiently against the 49ers. Well, they, people there disagree were, with you because uh, who won MVP of the game? It was Patrick Mahomes. I mean, people people voted for Tom Brady after he cheated through Super Bowls for MVP. <laughs> I'm sorry. But he wasn't the really MVP. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, come on now. Let's, let's not go there. That doesn't even matter to me. I think what matters to uh, me is the fact that the running back was 138 yards and none of the running backs for the 49ers were even able to reach that. I think the only one that had uh, th that type of yardage was Debo Samuel Samuels. Uh, I think they did not even do short passes to Emmanuel Sanders to allow him to touch the ball and maybe do a couple of screen plays. Uh, I think the 49ers failed in a lot of ways. But once again, give credit where credit is due. Kansas City came out with Andy Reid's game plan, which is we're going to run down their throat as well, and then we're going to do little uh, play action passes, and we're going to fake the ball, and we're going to do little trick plays. If you notice, the very first series, they just did trick play after trick play, and they were able to score a touchdown off of that. Yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, I want to congratulate Andy Reid. Uh, I mean, so such a long time in the league, worked hard. <laughs> he finally got his Super Bowl. We can't hold that against him anymore. I like I like that um, he 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 even thanked like his past players, but I think he was talking about Donovan. <laughs> oh, of course. You know he wanted to give one for Donovan yeah. for the Eagles. No, the but Donovan Donovan's a big pussy, and he was throwing up. The moment was too much for him. He was crying like a little bitch that fucking Super Bowl. Oh, wow, he had right. T.O. with the uh, he had T.O. with the broken leg, almost close to 200 oh, receiving yards. Oh, right, Lord Jesus, right. have mercy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, congratulations to Andy Reid. Um, yeah, finally got his Super Bowl. Yeah, and, and in a way, I'm kind of happy because Kansas City, just, they haven't won a Super Bowl such a long time. And for them to receive it, yeah. uh, it you know, and... Missouri, all of Missouri is going to be enjoying that. Uh, you know, kids are uh, took days uh, the, the day off today to celebrate. So you know they have a great team, and you know, shout out Kansas, to the honey. Kansas is going to be enjoying it as well too. Yeah, according <laughs> to the president. According yeah. to the president. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, uh, I, I would no, say one thing I want to say is Mahomes 
finally has broken the Madden curse. <laughs> we can't say anybody who's on the cover of the Madden cur curse, I mean, uh, of the Madden cover is going to have a shitty season anymore because Patrick Mahomes won the Super Bowl. Uh, but, yeah, man, I, I mean, it was a it was an enter entertaining game overall. It was a close game. Yeah. That's and, what I, mean, I wanted to see in the congrats end. congrats to the, the Honey Badger. He left, you know, um, he didn't re-sign with the Houston Bill O'Briens. He instead Smart. went to uh, Kansas City, uh, played really great. Uh, um, I don't know why, but the Houston Bill O'Briens, along with the head coach Bill O'Brien, didn't change any of their, their, their verbiage when it comes to their plays. Uh, so Kansas City knew almost every single play from what I'm hearing. Never let them um, go. So, you know, uh, shout out to uh, – No, I think but Tyrone Matthew, man, uh, turned into a big leader for that team, for that defense. Uh, I, be I believe the day before he was um, – the coaches picked him to give a speech to the team. And right before – or I, I don't know if it was the second half, but he was talking crap to his defense because they had just given up some points. He got on his defense. The oh, defense yeah, played <laughs> crazy good right after he went off on them. I think that's what they needed, some tough love. And Tyrone Matthews, that leader that can do that, man. So he played hard. Uh, congratulations to him as well. Yeah, yeah, congratulations to Kansas City. Uh, I feel bad for uh, uh, John Lynch, one of my favorite players of all time, one of the best safeties of all time. Uh, he, he basically did not agree with the decision of the head coaches in some of the areas, especially when call, not calling the timeout. When you have Oh, yeah, seconds, what was that like, about? That was, pretty that was so stupid. stupid. He, he brought it down. The, but you know what he reminded me of, Los? It reminded me of Gary Kubiak. Yep, uh, very conservative. I mean, this is the... The Super Bowl, man. Yeah, but he has you like two minutes on the clock in this in the first half. You'll get your, your timeouts that. back. I agree. What the hell were you thinking? I but don't know. if not for uh, that one call, he did hit uh, um, Kittle. Uh, Kittle's but down. He hit him down with, 20, with twenty-eight. Yeah, seconds. but that was a push off, though. Yeah, which would have been a which would have been a. I don't think. I think. I don't it was think it was a tiki tiki foul. I, don't, I wouldn't have the called it in the, the Super Bowl. Way. Um, but that would have been three points right there, but whatever. I mean, you're right. Nonetheless, the coach should have been more aggressive instead of running down the clock in the Super Bowl, the biggest game of their life. And that's what happens. They were 10 points up, decided to, uh, uh, the time when you should have been conservative and run the ball, you weren't, you weren't decided but to see, throw I the think ball. This is a trend. I think it's a trend in the NFL. Like I, I, I've been watching football for about 20 years. My right toe knows more football than some of those coaches, uh, especially how to run and manage the game clock. How would you not start calling? You have three timeouts, and you're at the two-minute warning. How are you not going to be calling your timeouts? To me, it's the most stupidest concept as a stupid-ass head coach that shows me you're not ready for the big leagues. You shouldn't be yep. in the big leagues. You should stick to offensive coordinator or defensive Ooh. coordinator. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of great head coaches in the NFL. It's going to reflect next year. Outside of, I would believe, Bill Belichick, Andy Reid, uh, you can't even mention one. Don't even bring up Mike McCarthy. He couldn't do shit with Aaron Rodgers uh, for years. Chucky? Uh, Chucky has to, to prove himself. It's been a while. It's been about more than 20 years. He's he about to, to with Tom Brady. He's about yeah, to with Tom Brady. It's actually been 18 years since he won a Super Bowl. Uh, hey. he actually, yeah, 18 years. He needs to chill. Yeah, he needs to one. Yeah, chill. He needs to one. So... <laughs> We'll see what happens, but congratulations to Kansas City and your fans. Uh, you know how wonderful it must be. Uh, I hope you guys never have a head coach that becomes a general manager and the offensive coordinator <laughs> at the same time um, and fucks up your team. You know, so I wish you guys the best. What? Uh, that's all there is to it, guys. Well, tell us what you think about the stupid ass Super Bowl. I honestly was going for the 49ers. I hate Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I was going for the 49ers, uh, too. Um, you know, but it is what it is. I thought, uh, I thought we were going to begin to see the legend of Jimmy G, but he choked. Porn star yep. Jimmy. I thought we were going to see porn star Jimmy Me pull too. it off. Hey, I thought that's three. You know, he had the two minute warning before the half. I thought we were going to see something there. He had the three minute, you know, Three minutes at the end of the game. Nope. Uh, it, it just goes to show that not everybody can be like Tom Brady, no matter how hard you try. Well, I'm glad Eli Manning beat him twice, and so did Nick Foles. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Ring the bell below. Uh, watch out for next Monday when we have our normal podcast. I will be returning uh, before the week after, because then after that I have to work again on a Saturday. But not to worry. I'll be uh, this Monday. Peace. Peace.
Yeah, he's coming.